Good morning, folks. I'd love to have seen the lunar eclipse this morning, but the clouds dominated my sky. Oh, well. Big news out of Cassini. We may be seeing the birth of a moon. This bulge at the outer rings of Saturn is what scientists believe may be ready to leave her parental guardian and begin her life independently. With no coronal hole, space weather, and only eclipse to work with, we had a sharp drop-off in quakes, initially even more so than I could have expected with the factors dropping. But we did take a large tremor overnight after more than 24 hours without significant shaking. Also had yet another above-average U.S. rumble in Idaho. Uyen system update. The sun has been almost completely quiet for days now. No major ejecta or flaring. And we have no current tropical concerns. The last one we had to worry about is heading on now and may have spared lives, but not the farmers. Some have lost almost everything and we're talking damage totals in the billions. Looking between Australia and New Zealand, you see the two lows that remain still have some moisture to deal with wherever they go. Tazzy, put eyes on the left at the next system coming through. Moisture flow is still along the west coast of Europe here. A thousand kilometers to the east, the air is diving southward for a bit more of a chill today in Central Europe. Meanwhile, the severe warnings have borne out in the United States and will continue today. Let me visualize what I've described a thousand times as this air slams together at its vastly different temperatures. They're heading from the north and the south. They have different pressure values, different moisture contents and relative humidity, condensation nuclei even. And when you make them work out their differences, there's a lot of energy involved as with any reaction. And this takes place over hundreds of miles. Solar wind calm and calming on the speed and temperature but the plasma density is a bit above average slight variations still have the kp off the floor but we're at minor disturbance levels earth's magnetic connection to the sun is currently on the departing limb away from every sunspot on the disk and now we see that peppering of spots to which we looked forward days ago with the north still magnetically simple despite major umbral growth in the trailing region meanwhile the southern spots are the story Two new active regions have the right stuff, and they're even inspiring the elder statesmen behind them. The babies have magnetic complexity, blue and red clashing, and in the southern group, I count at least three delta potentials. I'm even seeing one at the center of the trailing group. We're also maintaining eyes on the limb for more incoming. Today will be a good test of sunspot magnetics versus the long-term weakening of solar magnetic fields. We should be seeing at least one M flare today. Those new spots are indeed encroaching, blocking, and reducing the power associated with the coronal hole incoming just behind them. Their umbral fields are in the way, and this next quake uptick could be less intense. After weeks, we have had another Earth-facing eruption, but a tiny one, a tiny filament center disk. Much of it slipped back into the sun, but NASA claims some is heading in Earth's direction. This hamster burp of a CME will likely be imperceptible in the solar wind telemetry. Folks, it is that time. The RV is in the shop, and I'd like to personally thank Ken Farber and the entire team at Farber Specialty Vehicles. They appear to value education and science as much as business. Thank you for everyone who made this happen. Folks, there are only 30 people left who did not return the Kickstarter survey email saying what name they want on the RV. PayPal pledgers, you rock, I've got you all. We're down to these last members here. If I don't hear from you soon, gotta just use the name you used on Kickstarter. Mobile Observatory Project is a go. Shots of our start to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.